Israel breaking news today. For protesting Israel cloud agreement, Google terminates 28 employees. After over 20 workers staged a protest this week over Google's cloud computing deal with the Israeli government, the tech giant fired them. An inquiry revealed that the employees had protested within Google's New York and Sunnyvale, California headquarters, leading to their dismissal. The organization responsible for organizing the action, No Tech for Apartheid, said on X that they broke into the office of Google Cloud CEO Thomas Kurian in Sunnyvale. We stand with Palestinian, Arab and Muslim Googlers, and no more genocide for profit, were among the banners hoisted by protesters. According to a Google representative who talked with CNN on Thursday, the demonstrations were part of a long-standing campaign by a group of groups and people who mostly don't work at the tech firm. Protesters from inside the company broke into a couple of our stores and caused some trouble. It is absolutely unacceptable and a full breach of our policies to physically block the work of other employees or their access to our facilities. The statement stated that law enforcement was brought in to remove them from the premises after they refused to leave many times, in order to guarantee the safety of the office. We will keep looking into this and take necessary measures, but we have already terminated the employment of 28 people as a consequence of individual investigations. No Tech for Apartheid has denounced the firings with conviction, citing a $1.2 billion deal between Google and Amazon to supply cloud computing services to the Israeli government and military, Project Nimbus. The group released a statement on Thursday on Medium, stating that this flagrant act of retaliation is a clear sign that Google prioritizes its $1.2 billion deal with the genocidal Israeli government and military more than its own workers. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stated, We will make our judgments ourselves over the response to Iran's attack. This came after high-ranking diplomats from Germany and Britain urged Israeli officials to exercise restraint and prevent a broader regional conflict. David Cameron, the British Foreign Secretary, expressed his hope that the Israelis would take action in a manner that would not further escalate the situation, things to keep in mind. Following their meeting in Brussels, European Council President Charles Michel announced that the EU will further restrict Iran, this time focusing on its missile and drone development. He emphasized the importance of doing everything possible to isolate Iran. Iran poses a threat not just to Israel, but to all of the countries in the area. In response to a United Nations report that claimed that Israeli Defense Forces troops subjected detainees in Gaza to severe physical beatings and treatment akin to waterboarding and attacks by dogs, the Biden administration stated its intention to urge the Israeli government to conduct a thorough inquiry. According to the UN Humanitarian Affairs Office, the number of communities hit by Israeli settler violence in the West Bank increased threefold from the previous week to 37 between April 9 and 15. Over the weekend, a settler attack resulted in the deaths of at least two Palestinians, following the disappearance and subsequent discovery of a 14-year-old Israeli shepherd. According to the office, there have been around 450 Palestinian casualties and nine Israelis killed in the West Bank since October 7. The Gaza Health Ministry reports that there have been 76,664 injuries and 33,899 fatalities in Gaza since the conflict started. The ministry does not differentiate between civilians and combatants, but claims that women and children make up the majority of the casualties. Israeli officials have reported 260 casualties among Israeli forces in the Gaza conflict thus far, with an estimated 1,200 casualties overall, including over 300 soldiers, in the October 7 offensive by Hamas.